The first one of these made a lot of you question life, so let's do it again! Many of the programs that are on television or Netflix are super entertaining and generally follow an easy to understand plot. However, as you might have guessed from the title of this video, some shows, shows that you thought that you knew very well, might actually go way deeper in plot and story than you might realize. That is if these theories are true. Here are 10 scarily plausible TV show theories, part two. Number 10 is House is an Adult Doogie Hauser. Some people say that if you've seen one hospital drama, you've seen them all, as many are incredibly similar. Well, there's a theory about just how true that is, and it happens to connect two seemingly unconnected shows in an amazing way. A near clone of the high-functioning sociopath that is Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Gregory House is the title character from the Fox medical drama, House MD. But if you believe this crazy suggestion, he may have had another name before he wound up at Princeton Plainsboro, Doogie Hauser. This theory claims that Doogie's best friend, Vinny, died of an illness the young doctor should have caught. In his guilt and sorrow, Hauser becomes cynical and verbally abusive, transforming into House, who moves to Jersey and focuses his life on diagnosing patients without attachment. House was definitely one of my favorite shows, and a lot of people's actually. You hear me, Netflix? Do a reboot of this. If it can work for Full House, it can work for this. Number 9 is Bayside High is a Fantasy World. Ooh, now we're getting deep and meta. A staple in Saturday morning television from 1989 through 1993, the original Saved by the Bell was adored by fans, especially those who were drawn to the main protagonist, Zack who delivered many of his lines and looked right at the camera. But what many of you may not know is that this show didn't give the world its first look at Zack or a number of others, as many of the main cast appeared on Good Morning Miss Bliss prior to Saved by the Bell playing the same characters. The difference is the first version of Zack was often embarrassed and picked on, while the next version was suddenly the most popular guy in school. It wasn't long before people began pointing out that Saved by the Bell is just a fantasy, dreamt up by Zack, in which his life is better and he's not a miserable child. Okay, this theory makes way too much sense, and not just because I identify with the fantasy world part. In mine, I ride a dinosaur and have hair. And have a top hat, it's fun. Number 8 is Multiple Simpsons. If you've been watching The Simpsons for its entire 29 year run, you may find yourself asking why nobody in the town of Springfield seems to age. Even Maggie's still a baby. They seem to go through different seasons, having annual Halloween specials and various Christmas episodes, and yet no time seems to pass between them. Well, according to one popular theory, there can only be one explanation. Springfield exists in multiple universes. Every time that Homer and Marge tell the story of how they met or when the children were born. The years seem to change from 1980 to the late 90s as recently as 2007. However, if every episode took place in a different universe, it becomes a little clearer. Every time you see Homer, it's a different version. Wait a minute, that means that there's multiple versions of my favorite character, Krusty. <laughs> Number 7 is the government cancelled Firefly. Though it only aired for 11 episodes, Firefly received a cult following, which led to a movie called Serenity two years after the series ended. But with such a huge amount of support for the show becoming clearer, people began doubting broadcast company Fox's initial reasoning for their decision to cancel it, that being a lack of viewership. It wasn't long before a theory was proposed that gained the support of many fans that Firefly was canceled by the United States government. That's right, get your tinfoil hats out. Allegedly, in 2002, the Bush administration, who were trying to convince everyone that invading Iraq was necessary, decided that they didn't like the way that the show presented the villainous alliance, which was formed by America and China and the anti-government theme, so they ordered its cancellation. Psh, this show was trying to trick George W. You can't trick him. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, 
it, we can't be fooled again. Number six is Mr. Howell's drug deal. Just sit back and you'll hear a tale about a failed drug mission to transport drugs. There's a fan theory about the 1960 TV series Gilligan's Island that says that the real reason that Mr. Howell booked the boat was to get to international waters to buy drugs. For some proof, just look at the theme song. It clearly says that they were on a three hour tour. So why did the Howells have so much luggage with them? Who gets on a short boat trip with 20 different outfits? Other than your boy, you know I like to stay. Hey, fresh. But really though, Mr. Howell is so wealthy that he should be able to afford his own yacht, but instead rents an unassuming tour boat? He paid off the skipper and Gilligan and brought the clothes just in case the Coast Guard showed up and they had to flee to another country. The professor is there with the equipment to test the drugs and Mary Ann is actually an undercover cop. Oh wait, you hear that? That's the sound of millions of people's childhood breaking. Number five is the Scranton Strangler's real identity. Once again, prepare to have your world shooketh. The US version of The Office was a beloved TV comedy, but beyond the laughs, something far more nefarious may have been occurring during the program. A subplot involves a serial killer called the Scranton Strangler, who is mentioned several times and even passes by the office building during a police chase. He's later arrested and one of the office's employees, HR rep Toby Flenderson, is selected to be on the jury. Yeah, the thing is that there's a of evidence to support the theory that Toby is in fact the Strangler. For one thing, he's never around when there's news about the Strangler on TV. Secondly, he openly laughs about being a juror, though he was sworn to secrecy and later feels tremendous guilt when a guilty verdict is handed down. Is it possible that the most boring character on The Office is secretly the most exciting and evil? Yeah, I definitely say it's possible. Look at that face. He looks like he's ready to kill someone. Go home and eat a tub of ice cream and watch Netflix. Just chill out. Number four is the upside down is the future. On July 15th, 2016, Netflix launched one of the greatest original series, Stranger Things, and it took audiences by storm. The series is set in a small town, but the scary antagonists mostly come from a place called the Upside Down, a mirror-like universe where dust seems to float up and everything is dark and terrifying. However, one fan theory suggests that the Upside Down isn't actually a parallel universe at all, but actually the future. More specifically the way that the world will be after the creatures in the Upside Down have killed or consumed everyone in it. The theory says that Eleven, the powerful psychic in the series, has torn a hole in the fabric of space-time and what the kids encounter is actually a visual representation of how things will be if they fail on their quest. That's dark. Well, even if our future is dystopian, filled with monsters coming out of the sky and eating people, as long as we still have egos, I'm chilling. Number three is the Fresh Prince is dead. Now, this is a story all about how Will Smith died and God drove him to heaven. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air told the tale of the protagonist, Will Smith, as he grew into an adult with the help of his extended family. But there's a sad but believable theory that says that everything viewers saw wasn't Will dealing with real life, but embracing his path in heaven. In the intro to the show, Smith claims he encountered some guys who were up to no good, and that he got in a fight, which resulted in him being being sent to stay with his aunt and uncle. But this theory claims that Will was actually killed in that fight and that the laughs, lessons, and love that he receives over the course of the show's six seasons are all part of his journey through heaven. And to put the cherry on top, the rare taxi that brings Will to Bel Air is actually, apparently, driven by God himself. Would have been more believable if they got Morgan Freeman to drive it. Morgan Freeman, talking about penguins and all kinds of relaxing things. Number two is Murder She Committed. 
On the air for 12 seasons, Murder, She Wrote was a popular television series that starred Angela Lansbury as Jessica Fletcher, a mystery writer and amateur detective who seemed to happen upon murder cases at an alarming rate, though one theory suggests something far more nefarious was going on. More often than not, Fletcher would be the first to discover a body and report it to the police before launching into an investigation herself. The confusing thing here is that she lives in Cal Abbott Cove, a fictional small town in Maine with a population of only 3,500 people, yet it sees over 274 murder victims during the show's run. That would give Cabot Cove the highest murder rate in the world. You hear that Chicago? You're not so bad. Perhaps Fletcher's using her savvy detective skills not to solve the murders but get away with them. See people, women can be serial killers too and she did this way back in the day before the whole women's movement these days. She was truly a trailblazer. And number one is the breaking dead theory. Ha <laughs> ha, prepare to fall out of your chair. After Breaking Bad ended on September 29th, 2013, fans waited impatiently for its spin-off, Better Call Saul, to bring them back to the Heisenberg universe. But apparently they didn't have to wait at all, as the sequel to Breaking Bad may have already been airing, a show called The Walking Dead. <laughs> Yeah, just keep following. There are a number of hints that the two shows share a universe, including the blue meth that Walter White creates appears in a Walking Dead episode, as well as even the crossbow-wielding Daryl Dixon refers to a drug deal and quotes a line right out of Jesse Pinkman's mouth. The theory goes on to say that the legendary blue meth that's cooked up by Walter White may have eventually caused the zombie apocalypse in The Walking Dead. Ha! Huh, okay, that last one was disturbing. In fact, these are all pretty disturbing because they're so realistic. I bet that these could be a thing. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below because this was a fantastic video to make. It actually kind of blew my mind. Hope it blew yours. Fantastic. Bye now.